I found, uh, and I'm sure that this is kind of universal, that there's a point if you're not willing to be vulnerable where the relationship simply can't grow anymore. You're listening to the Dare to Be Different podcast, a podcast for people who want to live an extraordinary life. On this week's episode, Joe and Ed talk about being vulnerable and honest with everybody around you. Enjoy. Welcome to the Dare to Be Different podcast. My name is Joe Altier here with my co-host, Ed Newell. What's going on? It's great to be here today, Joe. It is, man. I'm having a blast. You know, the Cybertruck was announced last night. You know, I know. I'm well, a, depending on when we do this, it probably was re- announced a couple weeks ago. That's right. We're obviously we're filming a few weeks in advance, yes. so uh, you you will have more information than we have at this moment. But I'm really excited for it. I am too. Yes. Although this is definitely a lesson in delayed gratification, because I have been looking forward to the Cybertruck for a very very long time, and even with them announcing, it's still years off. Yes. Well, you know. We're we're just gonna have to wait in line. Did you do the did did you do a deposit? No, I did not oh. do the deposit. Wow, I that was a that's a little bit too aggressive for me. Yeah, even it's though it's only a hundred dollars, it's still a little like Apple Pay. It's like Apple what? Pay, it's <laughs> and nothing. it's fully refundable. Yeah, so might as well. <laughs> might as well. It's a hundred dollars. <laughs> no problem. So can I borrow a hundred dollars? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it, obviously, it's very con- like I think the majority of people kind of hate it. I think truck enthusiasts are going to hate it. Truck traditionalists are going to hate it. I, I I agree. I think that there's going to be a big pushback. You're going to have you're, you're going to have people that just jump in with both feet. Like I want it really bad. Yeah. Because of all the advantages that it have. Because because it does. It has huge advantages yeah. over a regular truck. Right. You know. But um, as you saw out in the parking lot, I have you know a 1979 F150 that yes. I'm cruising around in. Yes. Like true. Like that's a truck. Like yeah. there's. He there, took some shots at Ford, though. You didn't watch the whole keynote. I did, I did not watch the whole keynote. He said, yet. "He said this is a truck actually built tough, not fake tough." Ooh. He said, "So when we build tough, we actually build tough." Well, I'll be interested. Not again. Not not that I want to go because I want the cyber truck. Yeah, you know, of course. But I drive a forty-year-old truck. I'll be right. really curious if the cyber truck in forty years after it launches, if they're still around, and That's and able to be able to be, you know, used on a regular basis. So that is an interesting question. We need yeah. to do a whole other podcast on that. Yeah. You'd have to think as long as you can replace the battery that you would think, but you would think, but technology, you know, the, the, the old technology for cars and trucks, you know, it hasn't changed very much. I have a feeling that the next 40 years will be so drastic. I think that that Tesla is just the tip of the iceberg as far as new technology yeah. that, that vehicles will look terribly different. In 40 years from now yeah i agree so so anyway like i said I, I i would challenge that that the cyber truck 40 years after the first one rolls off the line is still running as good as my 1979 f-150 with no radio no cup holders you know the the windshield wants to fog up etc cetera, etc cetera, but it still runs like a beast can we set a reminder for 2059 to double check this and confirm this statement I'll be curious to see if I'm around in 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> I'll be really impressed if I'm still around. <laughs> so, Joe, I was right. <laughs> yeah, like I'll, I'll have like like my pudding <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that no. they're feeding me. Yeah. Like, who are you? Yeah. Like, but I'll rub it in your face all the same. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like you're going to be terribly young. You're not going to be, be much young younger. Yeah. <laughs> like Ed's in his 70s. A spry 71. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's get into it like an actual yeah, topic for absolutely. our podcast. Let's do it. So this week, I want to talk about the difference between honesty versus truth. Okay. So, you know, one of our one of our values that we talk about on the podcast is being honest. Right. <clears throat> and two things happened this week. Number one the um we do a uh, we we are in the middle of reading a book with the staff we do every friday we do a a um kind of a, a staff meeting but it's more about you know personal and, and collective um improvement rather than hey this is what's going on in the business so the book that we're reading um the the section that we're on was talking about character and okay. was talking about um you know being honest and we got into this interesting discussion about you know is if if is character telling the truth or is it being honest? 
you know, mm. so you can you can have good character by not and and not tell somebody that their breath stinks. You, mm. you know what I mean? Like right. you don't necessarily have to tell the truth all the time, right? To 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 be honest, right? Right? Yeah. So where did your staff land? We um, I mean, we just kind of talked about uh, you know, we we kind of talked about the difference. We didn't necessarily have a definitive you know definitive s- stance. Yeah, we were, we were like I said, it was more about character in, in general. Yeah. Um, I so. I would absolutely agree. There, there are very much two different things. And I would say, man, honesty to me, I think tends to, tends to feel like the, maybe the more, more important characteristic as I want to live my life and lead, because there's going to be, there's always situations in my lifetime, whether it's interacting with my spouse, interacting with a friend, interacting with a coworker, interacting with an employee that sometimes you, you have to you have to ensure that you are being honest with them because people can smell inauthenticity. They can oh, smell fakeness. They can smell when you're not telling the truth. And so if you don't really bring a, a sense of integrity and honesty to your conversations, people can smell it a mile away and then they don't want to be in relationship with you. They don't want to follow you. They don't want to trust you. Right. I- exactly. And, and so the second thing that happened this week okay. was, uh, we, uh, uh, I posted a picture of me relaxing at um, at our camp. My my daughters hated it, right? I it saw was, this. You saw this, yes. right? And so, and they were just like, "This is this is stupid." You know, they, they just gave me a hard time about yeah. it. Yeah. So we actually created this this um, picture of you know just teasing my daughters, but then also kind of making fun of me, right? right? And the team here was divided down the middle on whether or not I would be willing to put this you know, this post out that wow. made fun of myself. Wow. And so, and when I said, yeah, go for it, let's do it. You know, some people were really blown away here, right? So, mm. so there's this, um, you know, there's this side of honesty where it, it makes you vulnerable. Right. Right. So there's, and, and so mm. as I was talking to my wife about this, so, you know, we do, these words of the year, right? That's kind of how the whole Dare to Be Twin right. podcast came out. Yep. And I told her that my word of the year for 2020 is actually going to be vulnerable. Hmm. You know, actually putting myself out there, like with, taking some of the the guards down, and actually being completely authentic, or as 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 authentic as I can possibly be. Sure. You know, and so, um, so there's again, there's that side of honesty as well. So, do you um, feel like? Do you feel like? for seasons of your life for a majority of life you have not lived not lived authentically i i, I don't think or that it's too not, shielded yeah i think guarded. that it's it's well and especially when it comes to social media right? right um so so again we were we were talking specifically about that you know there's a there's an air that that people naturally put out on social media absolutely right you you, you have the it's the good side of your life yeah what you want people to see right so you, you know, for me, that's the easiest way to point at something and saying, I- I'll be authentic. You right. know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> instead of going through the 47 pictures that, um, that somebody took of that particular, whatever that, that, um, moment in time is and trying to pick the best one that I look the best, like, no, just pick one. Like this yeah. is real. This is life. Yeah. Um, so it, it primarily in your social media presence or in, even in just the way like you would lead at work. Well, you know, for that's just a way to to publicly like show it, right? So okay. that's the that's the for me that's the easiest way to say is if I can start being authentic in this side of things, right? right it will actually lead to authenticity in, in other sense. ways, right? Yeah. And and there's there's definitely times that you never let on as a, as a business leader or anything else. You don't necessarily let on sometimes how bad things are or, right. or how difficult they are yeah. and things like that. Um, some of it's self-preservation, right? You, you you don't want you don't want your customers to know, you don't want your partners to know, you don't mm-hmm. want your staff to know, right. you know things like that. Yeah, you, you're you're carrying a different burden, a different level of responsibility for the organization, and so you know if a deal falls through, if something doesn't happen the way you intend it to happen, you may not want that to trickle down into staff health. Sure. Sense. Yeah. You don't want, um, you know, uh, sometimes our, our job as leaders is to, uh, again, shoulder a burden that we don't want necessarily to trickle down. Yeah. And, and in that, in that circumstance, I wouldn't describe that as being inauthentic or, and I wouldn't describe it as being dishonest. Um, that that's just a aspect of leadership that comes with the territory when you're in the positions you are. Correct. 
but there's also the you know what you do with your family as well right you know there's there's definitely stress and um things that um people go through that they don't share with their spouse number one right. they might not want to, them to worry right um or they don't want to relive those things right you know things like that yeah um which does which some of those things do lead to a bit of an inauthentic relationship yeah yeah, so I'm sure you have a plan here, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. How I have no how, plan. Let's okay, let's great. just run with how it. How will you navigate the year of 2020, the year of vulnerability for you? How will you navigate in what what circumstances you will choose to be more vulnerable in versus you will choose to carry out everything you just said where you might need to preserve some information? You know, the good thing is I have some time because I have no flipping clue. <laughs> I, I have no, literally, I have no idea how this plays out in my life. Right. Uh, I'll be really curious as we go through. I mean, part of it is, is this podcast, you know, what right. I mean? you know, being, you know, having, you know, some, some thoughts and things that actually go out to the world. Right. You know, some of it will be the social media side, but how, how to balance those things. I think that there's just a, um, you know, if it's not good for the people around like it's it's the same thing like you know do, do you have to be honest with somebody about the fact that their breath stinks you know do i have to be honest with somebody about a disappointment that i'm shouldering or, or a challenge that i'm shouldering is that good for the people around me i right. think that's probably where i'll have to look at drawing the line you, you know what i mean yeah it's interesting because i i definitely can think of moments over the last six months or something where i've been in conversations with uh, my spouse or an employee and I can, I'm able to consciously think in the moment, I'm not telling everything right sure. here, or, or I'm telling a version of what I believe is the right thing to say there. Um, and I have internally questioned, should I be more open about the current, current situation? And I think you're going to find yourself in those situations, especially as you put on the forefront of your mind, those happen for me just organically. But if you literally have vulnerability on the forefront of your mind, I think you'll find yourselves yourself in a situation arguably daily where you're going to have to make an act of choice. Can I, can I choose to be more vulnerable here, even just for the sake of exploring it in 2020? Right. And it'll be an interesting case study to hear. <laughs> it will hear be. What. I'm I'm really curious to see, you know, if I make it through all of 2020 with this, this newfound right. vulnerability, yeah. I'm like, forget this. This is right. not working out. Right. You know, it's yeah. like January 4th. <laughs> yeah. So I have a, I have a project I'm working on this week and um, it, it, being honest with you, it's produced a lot of uh, insecurity. And I was talking to someone um, on Monday about it and we were, it has nothing, the project has nothing to do with them. Um, but in the middle of the conversation, I, I felt like I was distracted in the conversation. I felt like I wasn't really bringing everything I could into the conversation. I literally paused and I just said, hey, I got this thing going on. And I, I truthfully said in that moment, it is resulting in a lot of insecurity, a lot of anxiety. Uh, and so I'm sorry if I'm distracted. And actually it was a really healthy thing for me to bring sure. up into the dialogue because it, it opened up a, a level of vulnerability. It opened up um, a window into my relationship. And this is an employee of mine. So I think for me to open up to them, um, that was a big deal for, for them because they sure. felt like, okay, my boss is opening up to me, you right. know, and it, it carried, it cur carried a certain level of weight in other circumstances. Maybe I wouldn't have brought it up, you know, but yeah, I think that's the power of when you utilize vulnerability in specific situations. I think people have the ability to, um, connect to that mm -hmm. and uh, grab a hold onto that. And you're not this fictional leader that's great at everything and your life's perfect and you got it all together. But when you actually share vulnerability, it becomes something that people can hold onto and want to follow more. Absolutely. Yeah. So l let's talk about the difference between honesty and truth. Sure. Right. So um, truth it is the accurate representation of reality, right? Right. You have a blue shirt on. Sure. Right. It's, it's the truth. That's that's the truth. Um, whether or not I like your shirt is, you know, mm -hmm. is a open subjective. For, yeah, yeah, subjective, right? And honesty is expressing your feelings and opinions accurately. So it's interesting that there's there's this difference because sometimes my me being honest isn't necessarily the truth, right? Right. So so a kid who says it's not my fault, right? And he might be being honest right is as far as as far as his reality goes yeah but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily the truth 
<laughs> right. Isn't that? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so again, I think I said this kind of in your introduction before you <laughs> before you even set up the whole concept. But uh, in in my in my experience, the, your ability to um, speak with honesty tends to be more uh, more important than your ability to speak truth. Sp truth can be truth can be obvious in a lot of circumstances. You don't need to tell people my shirt is blue. But your ability to be honest in situations, I really believe, lends itself to who you are, your character, your integrity, your vulnerability. Sure. Um, are you authentic? Are you going to be somebody that someone can trust in what they're saying, how they're living, you know, what you're doing? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, really, anyone can tell the truth. Honesty most times takes courage right. and character. Right. I For some reason, I feel like... Um, the word truth can sometimes get this negative connotation because people will say, I'm just telling the truth as the opportunity to be critical of somebody. Oh yeah. That's you know? good. And they will bring up this idea of, you know, you are terrible at life. I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. I'm just speaking the truth, you right. know, and they will, they will use it as an opportunity to be rude or an opportunity to get an agenda across and if you live your life that way, obviously no one wants to be around that. No one wants to um, follow, definitely follow a person like that. Whereas honesty, I do think requires courage. It can require uh, a certain level of understanding about the situation, about the people, about your, you're talking to, and you're bringing uh, a, a, a uh, what, how did you describe it? What was the, what was the definition of honesty? Honesty, expressing your feelings and opinions your, accurately. Your feelings and opinions. So you're bringing, a, honesty has your viewpoint in it. Exactly. And yeah. that can bring a lot of power because your viewpoint is unique and your viewpoint is um, specific only to you based on your experiences and your skill and your knowledge and everything else around it. So honesty really carries a certain level of weight and power in the situations that truth really does not. Truth is black and white. And again, people can oftentimes use truth to to harm. You can obviously use truth for good. Sure. But I think the majority of the time I see people trying to use truth for bad. I have, uh, I, or I had a grand grandmother who has passed away years and years ago and, uh, loved her dearly. Um, you know, very close to, to that side of my family, but she, uh, <laughs> like you did not want to gain weight around her. Like mm. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds like that would be the first thing she'd be like, Hey, so you, uh, <laughs> you look like you put on about 20 pounds. You're like, wow, grandma, that, that that was rough, right? Not dishonest most yeah. of the time, you know. Right. But but it was, it, it was you know it was definitely truthful. Yeah, probably didn't need to be said. Yeah, <laughs> but not, and I, yeah, I've heard people say this is almost like a ironic or um, ironic phrase, but people say I'm just speaking my truth, and I almost I, I almost laugh just thinking of that phrase because I'm not sure I would ever use that phrase in real life. But like I've heard it said your ability to speak your truth and that can be a, a valuable uh thing I, I guess in maybe a counseling session or thinking sure. something like that like you actually have to get it off your chest um but i've also heard it used in a negative connotation that almost that um i have to like i have to say this like definitively there's no way i can ever hold this truth in i need to say it but usually in those circumstances it, it's that's more related to um Honesty, because it's related to your opinions and your feelings and, right. and how, how you're feeling. And so describing it as truth, I think, brings it in to say this is a matter of fact thing, which it, it usually isn't a matter of fact thing. And then again, it just alludes to this idea that truth is the truth. The thing you're telling me is an absolute fact, but it can usually be harmful. And so people use it maliciously. Yeah. I, Alicia and I did a, a podcast a, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about um, fighting well. Right. Mm. And and, um, you know, one of the things that that we stopped doing was was saying the always or never sort of things. That's you good. always do this. You never do this. Right. right. And sometimes those are the perception. Right. So yep. that 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 is that is your perception. That is your reality. So so you're honestly at, at that point, you're saying you always do this as part of that argument. The, that's not the truth, though. Right. Very rarely is that is that the truth. Right. So. Yeah, you're you're to to speak your truth, um, and and I I agree with you. I think that's a it's a catchphrase that that's been going around right now, um, but but I but it is that that's you being honest 
about a circumstance, not necessarily truthful about the, the circumstance. Yeah. Um, and it, I've, I've also heard it said, and this is, this is primarily, a, uh, I guess, a religious uh, concept, but um, the idea that when you, you speak truth, you should also speak truth in love. Mm-hmm. And so there's this uh, idea that even when um, uh, you're, you're, you're speaking a truth that might be something definitive, you need to frame it in the right way. You know, so there is a there's a reality that if you do need to say something that is a, a truthful, in fact, statement, or even if you just got to be honest about something, the way that you say it matters so much mm-hmm. because you can be honest or speak truth maliciously or critically or really to harm somebody or put them down. Or if you actually want to bring about change, if you care about the person that you're in a conversation with, if you care about the people you're leading, the, your spouse, whoever, you can speak truth, you can speak honesty in a way that actually is helpful to the person that you're telling it to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so much that so much can be the deciding factor between is this a is this a healthy conversation for me to be in with you or do I not want to be around this person? Do I not want to follow you? Do I not want to work for this guy? Do they actually present their honest feelings in a way that is helpful for me sure. or is it damaging to me right yeah so you um to me you have always come across as an honest person so so that you you know sometimes you i don't want to say you wear your your feelings on your your sleeve but but you are much more forthcoming than than i am um in my my day to day sure is that um do you believe that that's you know maybe a product of your upbringing you know were your parents like that um because because my family was very um you know i I had the italian family that was like we scream at each other somebody rings the doorbell and you're like hey how are you today like it was just like you had that um you never show the outside problems your outside problems to the world you know you kind of close that off um i i i don't know where i learned it i know we, we've talked about this in other podcasts before, but, you know, personality assessments, those sort of things are really popular in, in this you know last decade or whatever. And I've, I've always historically rated high on things that rate emotional intelligence. Okay. And so, and I've, I've noticed for a long time in my life, my ability to um, emotionally read somebody. And it, <clears throat> that's helped me a lot in my leadership style in my ability to connect with people, my ability to relate to them. Um, I think, um, you know, it, it, it's been, I've, I've, I've had people say it about me that, you know, I, I, it's easy for me to win somebody over. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's cause my, like I'm really great or my personality is great. I think it's my ability to emotionally connect with somebody. And I, I think that's part of, part of my DNA. I guess I've never really thought about the fact that that was a learned trait or a learned skill that came up in my upbringing. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. I need to think about that. Well, and you know, you have young kids, and and I yeah. have, you know, I have children that I've raised, and now two teenagers, and then grandkids coming. And I just want to know, and, and I'm sure our podcast listeners, like, how do we do a better job of this? You, you know, how how do we raise kids? Like, how do we try to to do that? Especially if we did have closed off families and closed off parents and things like that. Um, to teach teach our kids yeah. to, to speak honestly, but say it in a way that's helpful to the people that you're talking to. Yeah, well, and then also to to have that level level of vulnerability in their honesty as well. Because again, yeah. I can be honest, but not necessarily completely honest. Like I can be truthful, but not necessarily honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I my my gut reaction to that is that we have to demonstrate it, right? And I think I, I've, I've heard it said maybe even by you at times who, whose kids are, are much older than mine because um, you're so much older than me. Um, <laughs> but I, I've heard it said before <laughs> that people with older kids as they are mentoring maybe the, the kids they have in their I just teenage- like to point out, I'm going to interrupt. <laughs> so again, I'm not sure that that's an honest <laughs> statement. <laughs> You know, it might be quasi truthful, but uh, you know, I mean, my, my perception I'm, is different. I'm in my young 30s. You're in your mid 40s, so it's uh, is yeah, that truthful. But in 20 years, that's that's not quite the same situation. <laughs> young 70s. Yeah, what, what's the, like the, the yeah? If you're in your 60s and I'm in my 70s, are we really that far off? So anyway, yes. Uh, it, but back to your no. I've heard it point. said even by you or other people as they maybe approach uh, older children. My kids are are four and two. So I haven't really had the opportunity to do this, but to actually have a a emotionally intelligent conversation with my kid to address a situation where maybe they messed up or did something wrong or 
even better, the parent messed up and the mm -hmm. parent did something wrong. And the ability to actually go to the kid, admit you were wrong, admit your failures. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard it said, I've read about the power that can come from that when you choose to do that with your children. And I'm sure that carries a ton of weight and it's a massive learning experience for uh, a child. I mentioned earlier, you know, when you're talking to a spouse or an employee, you may guard some information to not to worry them or whatever. Um, clearly we do that with children all the time. Mm -hmm. And so to then to bring into a moment where you authentically bring a level of honesty and vulnerability into the conversation that you typically aren't bringing normally in that day-to-day -day interaction, I think that for us as dads, that might wear down the, the Superman cape that we sure. would wear as a father, but it, it makes it more real as, as a kid. So um, I, don't, I don't know the answer. I, my kids are two and four, but I would like to think that if I get into a situation later on in life where I make a mistake, whether it's towards my kids or towards somebody else, if I practice authenticity and vulnerability and honesty, and honesty. with them, that hopefully that's going to rub off on them and how they live with others. So my, my daughter, Kaylee, who's now yeah. married, um, it used to be so cute, right? Thinking about this, but, but oh, you have a kid, you have a, a daughter who's married with two kids. Yes. Got it. Yeah. My kids are four and two. I, you started late. I don't know what to tell <laughs> Like, I, I can't help the fact that, that you're just not as efficient as I am. <laughs> but the, um, yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's true. That's but, true. Uh, so when she was young, um, if you asked her, you know, um, you know, who knows everything she'd be like my dad knows everything or if, if you would ask her you know why why do you think that and she's like because my dad knows everything it would just be like yeah it was like really cute, cute but probably a terrible lesson right? <laughs> <laughs> you know thinking back it served me really really well for for years and years um if you would ask her who she's gonna marry she'd be like whoever my dad says you know which mm. um you know uh logan who's my son-in-law you know I chose well, yeah. But, but anyway, the um, but again, probably not the right lesson through through the the ages. It should have been more of a again. It's cute when they're three, four, five years old, but as they become you know more aware of your faults, instead of trying to cover them up, being honest about them, yeah, would be. You're gonna have to make some changes in your office, I think, because I overheard your staff saying their morning mantra this morning of Joe is the best, Joe is the greatest, Joe is the best boss of all time. So I think you might have to uh, adjust some of your business practices then too. That might be like the end of 2020. I might I might be able to get up to where they don't have to chant that. But Your giant face is on the wall in the lobby. The picture of perfection. That's what it says, yes. if I recall. Yeah. So that we do have to clear that up. They do not, they do that voluntarily. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I have never, it's not a, it's not a, uh, you know, for employment, they have to do that. And I'm just kidding. They don't do that. They, they do not absolutely do that. Do not. They do not do that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, terrible, well, this, terrible life lesson for your daughter to <laughs> grow up believing that. But uh, of course she's much older, much wiser now. And, um, she would still, I'm sure believe her dad knows, knows a lot, but I'm sure you've had circumstances now with her where you've been able to actually have a real relationship with her, be authentic, be vulnerable, be more honest in situations. Sure. She's seen that in you and I'm sure your relationship is actually stronger now than arguably when it was when she was a little girl. Yeah. Well, it's interesting as they go out on their own, um, you know, where it's like, Hey dad, my hot water tank isn't working. I'm like, well, I can give you a number for someone to call. <laughs> like, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> Dad cannot fix that. Like Send I'm just him a not link that to guy. The Google search <laughs> yeah. results, hot water tank issues. <laughs> right. So, but That's uh, awesome. so so for my so, so for my um uh, my vision of going into 2020, yeah, being more vulnerable, being more honest. What uh, if you had to? If you had to give me some tips, oh. or or any of us, if we wanted to yeah. kind of talk through this, what? Uh, what do you think? And I know you're not prepared for this, so I'm just kind no, of curious okay. off the cuff here. Yeah. I mean, I think it would just be recapping some of the things we said. I think you need to consider how you're presenting your honesty mm -hmm. uh, and how you're presenting arguably truths that you might be saying. So um, are they being said in a way that is helpful to somebody or are they being uh, said in a way that actually can be damaging or tear somebody down? I think that's the number one thing. I think the other thing is um, practice the art of this might be confusing. Practice the art of thinking about how you think. 
And in the moment, uh, if you find yourself in a, in a conversation where you feel like, man, maybe I was a little too guarded or I could have been vulnerable, self-diagnose that even in mm, the middle of good. the conversation or immediately after the conversation and think, how could I have done handled that situation differently? If you decide in that self-reflection, I could have been more vulnerable, I could have said X, Y, Z, and it would have been better, just go back to that person and say it in that, in that second time around. It's gonna have the same blessing, the same impact on that person that you're talking to saying it that second time, uh, just as if you had said it the first time. You know, the, the one thing that occurred to me as, as we were talking is that we didn't, I didn't share the why, right? So why do, do, would I wanna be more vulnerable, right? Sure. So, you, you know, for me, and I think that this is kind of where, where we'll kind of sign off here, is the fact that I want to have healthier, healthier relationships. That's good. Right, I wanna be closer to the people that are important to me, whether that's my staff, whether that's my family, um, friends and things like that. And I found, uh, and I'm sure that this is kind of universal, that there's a point if you're not willing to be vulnerable where the relationship simply can't grow anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and that's with a spouse or, or anyone else. Um, so the only way for me to, to make those relationships stronger, other than spending time and all of this, but, but to get to <laughs> spending the, time, well, being yeah, nice, you know, telling yeah. them good things, you know, but, but the, but truly for them to be stronger, it has to be something internal, you know, that, that has to happen. That's good. And, and so for me, that is putting myself out there. Right. More. And so that's just one of my goals. I want to be, I want to be closer with the people around me. So I have to be willing to make that step first. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, I love that. I think some of the healthiest conversations uh, in seasons of my marriage, been married seven years, have been seven in the, years and only two kids. I know. Man. I know, got to pick it up to pace. Yeah, really. Um, we, it, it's been in those seasons where I think we've been able to be more vulnerable, more honest with each other about maybe how we're feeling in a season about life, each other, kids, parenting, anything. It's good. Yeah. So, so if you, as you know, uh, one of our podcast listeners, if you want to have a stronger relationship with the people around you, I challenge you to be vulnerable, to put yourself out there a little bit more, whether it's on social media, I would love if social media went from being this, you know, put our best foot forward, our best face out there to being real. I would, I think that would be so amazing, yeah. but you know, uh, but, but more importantly, when those times call for it, you know, be honest, be truthful, you know, tell your truth, the real truth, the, the real honest you. Does that make sense? It's good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening. I hope that you guys have a word that you are going to really stick to for 2020. And, um, you know, we'll catch you next week and be vulnerable this week. Tell somebody something that you would never tell anyone else. Talk to you later. Yeah.